Hi guys, welcome to another battle report. Uh, today we've got Dan and Aiden with me. Uh, we're going to be uh, having a go on a slightly different table layout. Uh, we have the churches come out to play today. Uh, I didn't get the vicar, but I probably should. Uh, the town square. Uh, some of it's been hit by some bombing. We've got this road that leads out to a little farm. Uh, and we've got some country lanes. Oh, there's one there I need to fill in. Uh, but yeah, we've got some country lanes. Uh, leading through some wooded area and a main road. Uh, we're going to be playing this scenario uh, envelopment and we'll be setting up shortly. Uh, but just to introduce the sides, we have actually two platoons today. Um, I'll control one, Aiden will control the other. Uh, we have British and Belgians. So for the British, we have uh, a command team, uh, we have an infantry section, uh, everything's regular for the British. We have a Boise anti tank rifle team. A light mortar and the Morris CS9 armored car for the Belgians and everything's going to be inexperienced we have the uh, officer second lieutenant two squads of infantry a medium mortar medium machine gun team and a t-15 tank uh, they will be defending or they'll be deploying along this side of the table uh, and the Germans will be deploying along this side of the table. Uh, for the Germans, we have two eight-man squads. Uh, they're going to be uh, everything's going to be regular for the Germans. Uh, we then have two ten-man, uh, including LMGs. We have two MMG teams. We have the Panzer II, uh, the motorcycle and sidecar. We have the Kupferwagen making its first appearance out on the table. Uh, we do have the figure I paint up as Rommel on the back, uh, but uh, he is going to be um, basically depicted as this officer uh, from Black Tree Design um, when outside of the car, so that they, or the Kupferwagen, so that they can transport a team if needs be. Uh, he will be acting as a captain today, uh, so given the additional um, support value or morale value. Uh, and then we've got our command team. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much everything. I will just explain. Uh, I've brought the civilians out today uh, and we're going to be testing those uh, in terms of the sort of role they have inside the game. Uh, basically, the Germans, to simulate the strafing runs they did against the refugees, uh, the German player will, at the beginning of each turn, uh, be allowed to move the civilians six inches down this road. And as you can see, it leads into the town. Uh, that could be useful against British armour and Belgian armour, but we'll see. Um, so, we're going to do the setup for envelopment and then we'll be right back. Okay guys, so we have uh, set up the Allies. Uh, Aiden's brought his medium mortar into the cover of this ruins. The machine gun team looks to be on the move. Uh, Belgian squad has moved up as well, looking to maybe take the hard cover of the slip trench. Uh, the British have... Uh, the boys anti tank rifle looking down that sort of path there through the woods. Got a section there, uh, and the light mortar team ready to take cover behind the bunker. So, we're going to do some uh, proprietary bombardment. Dan's going to roll for this. Um, should we start on the right and just work our sure. way this way? Okay. okay. So, uh, roll a d6 for the light. Mortar team. Light mortar team. That's a four, so it can't take any more. The unit takes two pin markers. I need to go get the pin markers. Okay. Um, do you want to put a die on them for now? Yep. Cool. Uh, infantry team. They get a two. Uh, that was close. The unit takes one pin marker. Do you want to put one on them? Yeah, I got. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, the one. That's miles away. No effect. So the boys. Anti tank rifle is good to go. Missed or oh, wasn't hit. Six. Six on the Belgians. Incoming, the unit takes two pin markers and one automatic hit with a three plus penetration value. This counts as indirect fire, always striking the top armor. Okay. So one automatic hit, would that mean one would be dead? One dead? Yeah. Well, if it's a plus three and they're inexperienced, that would suggest that they're. Take one off, so two okay. Uh, and the machine gun team two, two, they take one pin, 
and the medium water. Six cards. It's a five. Five. Uh, they take two pin markers. Okay, so uh, we're going to move on uh, to turn one, do Dan's deployment, and we will see you at the end of turn one. Okay, guys, end of turn one. Uh, the light mortar team from the British have moved up. Uh, so there's the infantry section. Uh, boys and tank rifle is in ambush, uh, just in case nothing happened. Uh, the Belgians moved up. The more, the uh, MMG team went down. The mortar passed an order test to try to hit this infantry squad here, but missed. Um, the vicar has come out of the church to see what all the fuss is about, what's going on, uh, and the virgins followed him. On the German side, the whole first, the whole army came in as the first wave. Uh, we've got machine gun team moving up here into this area. Uh, the Kugelwagen with the officer in as well has moved up to give some encouragement, hopefully from afar. Hmm. Uh, with two infantry sections in the woods, one moving into another woods, and there's a roadblock, uh, namely the civilians who move six inches. Uh, and then the church is getting a bit of attention from uh, the command team, the machine gun team, and the infantry team. So, end of turn one. Uh, nothing, no firing yet, but hopefully turn two will see a little bit more action. We'll catch you at the end of turn two. Okay, guys, end of turn two. Uh, the mortar team tried to fire early, the light mortar, and went down, failed the, pit, uh, the command test. Uh, the officer, British officer came on uh, just right at the end there. The British did take two casualties uh, from a German machine gun team that were in this woods here, but they managed to get the pin off them, pass the test, and kill them all in one volley. So good British accuracy there. Um, the Belgian, oh sorry, the anti-tank rifle took a shot at the Kubelwagen in the distance, as this is ideally sort of in the ground, it's dug into the ground, so that isn't blocking line of sight. Um, but the uh, Kubelwagen made a move for it, uh, and unfortunately, there was a ping on the side as uh, the anti-tank rifle chipped its paintwork. Uh, the Belgians moved up uh, to move into the woods just in case this unit here of Germans that decide to rush out to try to take the slip trench because these Belgians failed to pass their order test. So if they make it there, the Belgians can take the woods and all will be fine. Uh, Germans are moving up in force, as we say, uh, with the Panzer II going a little bit off-road onto this more dirt-like track. Um, the civilians are probably being more of a nuisance to the Germans than the, the Allies, So, but the Germans are sort of overtaking them now, uh, clearly a little bit faster. Um, and they've been going by the church as well to say hello to the, the vicar on their way. Um, the British armoured car came in, took a few shots, killed a couple of guys, or just one guy in this unit here, which was wonderful. <laughs> um, this machine gun team failed to move again. Uh, Belgian command team came on. Mortar team fired first and missed again. Uh, and the Belgian tank came on, ready to take a pop at any Germans coming around this corner. So, all in all, um, it's fairly even still. It's looking a slightly bit worrying for the Allies, but we'll see how turn three might change that. So, catch you in a minute. Hi guys, uh, end of turn three, it's been extremely uh, exciting, I uh, have to say. Let, let's move over to the big story of the uh, the turn. Uh, the infantry section of eight moved up, uh, they actually, this Belgian section failed to move, and this one advanced up into the slip trench and then fired and took some casualties and put another pin marker. And there was eight of them and no pin markers at the beginning of the turn. Then Aiden with his Belgian medium mortar, which had fired two ones against this unit that was over there. Uh, he ended up hitting this unit on a six. First time, uh, very good aiming. Uh, rolled for casualties, uh, rolled a four, so took out half of the unit. Uh, rolled, so they took the pin for the hit. They got an additional pin. Um, they actually got a third pin from this unit, but did roll uh, a morale test because it was half the unit gone. Uh, and they passed it. So uh, that was quite interesting. The anti-tank rifle team also moved and put a pin marker on the Panzer II. Uh, this unit here, Germans, took some, two more casualties off, off the British. Or sorry, they, they killed two more of the British. Uh, the British failed to fire back. 
but uh, the light mortar missed as well on them. Um, really, oh, the uh, Morris CS9 put some more, uh, actually put a pin on this unit here, uh, this German's here, but they failed to move after that. Um, this unit moved over from the church and took some shots from this machine gun team that finally activated. Um, and the T-15 is actually in ambush, just waiting for the vicar to move back into the church <laughs> and, and free up the shot for the command Never team. Um, if he stays out and watches, the, the command team may be safe, but uh, if they go back in, we, we could be in business. So, uh, end of turn three, it's not looking as disastrous for the Allies as it did in turn two, but we'll wait and see how turn four turns out before we uh, make any further judgments. So, we'll see you at the end of turn four. Okay, end of turn four, and it's another turn that's been dominated by the mortar. Uh, the British light mortar hit this team. Uh, they were going very strong. They had eight men to start with, got five casualties on that. Um, so they took, and they took two pin markers in total. Uh, got an extra one from the rifle guy of the command team. So they are not doing well. Um, the anti tank team, rifle, anti tank rifle team, uh, lost the spotter. Belgians moved up to fortify here. These Belgians still are failing to activate. Uh, this unit moved into the woods from the Germans. Uh, and the machine gun team of the Belgians has moved up. And the Morris CS9 advanced and shot, putting a pin on them. Uh, the motorcycle car's moving round to see if he can take out the mortar, which has been very effective. But the tank opened fire as it was in ambush and put a pin on them. Uh, Germans pretty much over here getting bogged down and, and the civilians don't help. Uh, they've actually probably been more of a hindrance to the Germans in this game. Uh, so we may have to rethink the uh, how they're going to work. Uh, maybe they'll start halfway up on the table instead next time. But Okay, uh, so that's turn four and we'll see you at the end of turn five. Okay guys, end of turn five. Uh, we're really getting close now. The mortar team hit again. Only caused one casualty, uh, but they did get a few pins, and they've had various other pins from other uh, units. Uh, the Kuperwagen delivered a machine gun team into the woods who moved into position, but were then taken out uh, by this infantry team here. So uh, that was quite effective. Um, the the machine gun and the armored car has been taking some uh, shots at this unit here, who also uh, passed command test to, again, put some rounds down on this unit. Um, the officers moved up to help them with that, which is quite helpful actually. Um, mortars firing and missing. Uh, the tanks fired and killed uh, the gunner on the motorcycle, so there's just one guy there. Uh, I'm not sure whether he should have gone or not, but we'll, we'll play it as he's still there. Um, this machine and uh, this team's moved up, command team's there. Uh, so we're gonna carry on with turn six. And we'll catch you at the end. Okay, guys, end of turn six. That was uh, pretty quick, as it usually seems to be. Um, the mortar team uh, hit and took out the team that was here, the remnants of it. Um, the machine gun team, I can't remember whether that was turn five or turn six, but they got taken out. Um, that might have been turn, turn five. Turn five, actually. Um, Belgians have pretty much not done anything since moving there. Um, they really have not done much today at all. Uh, that unit still fairly pinned. These guys have moved out from behind these buildings here and kind of moving this way. So then to move in the town centre. Everybody's pretty much on ambush. Uh, officers, uh, tank. Um, so we're going to roll now uh, to see if we have a, a turn seven. Um, Ain's going to roll it. Uh, if we get a one, two, three, it's a six, so we get another turn. So the Germans do have a chance to win. If it remains as it is now, uh, the Germans will lose uh, and the Allies will win. But we'll see at the end of turn seven. So we'll be back in a minute. Okay, guys, we're at the end of turn seven. Unfortunately, uh, with having these guys left on ambush, we weren't able to actually use them to help us. Uh, the Kuppelwagen with the captain has in fact made it into the deployment zone. Uh, not off the table, but into the deployment zone. Uh, there was another unit, uh, which the mortar was in here, in these ruins. He was under 12 inches, so couldn't fire. So moved away, fired, needed a six, hit on a six, 
and only killed one guy. But the uh, Morris Sith Knight helped out and uh, got enough for the morale check, and they failed that. So, um, yeah, very, very close German victory. Uh, it's been a good game. Lots of uh, units on the German side taken out. Uh, Allies only lost three units, and the civilians actually have stopped Rommel parading in his Kuppelwagen any further than the town square. So, uh, that's it from us. Uh, if, you, uh, if you're if you from Warlord and you're watching, Dan does need some early war German mortars yes. we've, we've worked out. Uh, so if you wouldn't mind sending those, that'd be great. Uh, if you've liked this video, please like it, comment, uh, and feel free to subscribe. So, we'll see you in another battle report.